A geometric sequence has a common ratio, which we designate as R. So basically what this means is you multiply or divide by the same number each time. So whereas arithmetic we would add or subtract, now we're going to multiply or divide. So let's look at an example. If I gave you 2, 4, 6, 8, I'm sorry, if I gave you 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, the common ratio R would be 2. You multiply by 2 each time. If I gave you 27, 9, 3, 1, the common ratio R would be 1 third. You could say you're dividing by 3 each time or you're multiplying by 1 third each time. And then, if I gave you 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, this would be a geometric sequence, and your R value would be negative 1. So each time you multiply by negative 1, the value doesn't change, but the signs alternate. Just like arithmetic sequences, Geometric sequences have an explicit formula. It starts a sub n, just like last time, equals a sub 1, which represents the first term. And then we're going to multiply by r, the common ratio. And then it's to the power of n minus 1. So again, a sub 1 is the first term. R is our ratio, and then N represents the term number that you're looking for. So if I gave you the example, A sub N equals 2 times 2 to the N minus 1, and I said find the tenth term You would do 2 times 2 to the 10 minus 1, which is 2 times 2 to the 9. And when you do this in the calculator, you get 1,024. So if we looked at that, ex that second example I gave you, where our ratio was 1 third, that explicit formula is a sub n equals 27, because that was the first term, times 1 third, the ratio, to the exponent of n minus 1. And again, if we're looking for the tenth term, you just plug 10 in where there was an n, and you have a sub 10 is 27 times 1 over 3 to the 10 minus 1 power, and you get 1 over 729. We also have recursive formulas for geometric sequences. Looks very similar where you need the first term, a sub 1, whatever that is, and then you have the a sub n equal to a sub n minus 1, just like before, except now we're going to multiply times r. So this is the term that came before, and r is still our ratio. 
So if we looked at that first example one more time, it went 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. This recursive formula would be a sub 1, which is our first term, which is 2, and then a sub n equal to 2 times a sub n minus 1. I like to write the 2, this r part over here, first. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you multiply it to begin with or at the end. It doesn't matter at all. And then that other, that second example where we had 27, 9, 3, and 1, that's going to be a sub 1, which is 27, our first term, a sub n equal to 1 over 3, our ratio, times a sub n minus 1, the term that came before. Okay, so let's look at this example. Our first term is 4, and then it appears that our ratio is being multiplied by 5, I'm sorry, 4 each time. So if we wanted to find the first 5 terms, the first one is given to us 4. So then, so that's the first term. Now my second term, where n equals 2, it's going to be 4 times a sub 1, because we have a sub 2 minus 1, which is a sub 1, which we know is 4 times 4. So my second term number is 16. Then, if I wanted to find my third, it would be 4 times a sub 2, because it's a sub 3 minus 1, which is a sub 2. And we just found a sub 2, which is 16, so now it's 4 times 16, which is 64. The fourth term, which would be 4 times a sub 3, so it's going to be 4 times 64, which is 256. And then our fifth term is going to be 4 times 256, which is 1024. Just like in arithmetic recursive sequences, you need the term before to be able to get the next term. And you can clearly see that because each of these values we needed, which were the values that came before.